All right, hey, welcome back, uh, YouTube subscribers. Let's go ahead and see and understand what exactly is state in Swift UI projects. I already have a project created. You can see it's a default project. So what we want to do is we want to add a switch control. And when the switch is, or a toggle control, and when the toggle is on, the whole background is black. And if the toggle is off, then it is white. So how can we do that? So let's go ahead and first create the toggle. Toggle. And the first thing you will notice is that there is no switch control. The switch is now a toggle. But what is this first argument? The first argument is of is on, which is type of a binding property. What that means is that the whenever the toggle is on or off, this property, the binding boolean, is automatically get updated, all right? You can really pass in a simple Boolean property over here by creating a Boolean property inside content view. You have to create a property which is bindable, meaning which can be placed over here when you change the toggle, the actual control, when you click on the control, the control changes and that value goes into or gets updated in your property. So that is exactly the state is. So if you create a state over here and you say is dark and you assign it, let's say some sort of a Boolean false. So what exactly is this state? This state is basically the state of a particular UI element, which in this case is a state of the toggle. And we can pass it in the toggle. So now if I go ahead and pass it, I can say over here is dark. And this is a special syntax, which means a dollar sign, which means that whenever you turn on the toggle, you click on the toggle and now the toggle is on, this particular property gets updated. So when you turn it off, this is also going to be updated again with the off or false value. The final thing we have to do is we have to go ahead and create a text which will say uh, enable dark mode or something so that we can at least see our uh, toggle button. So let's go ahead and run this and now you can see the toggle button actually right here. Okay so at this point what exactly is the whole point of state? I mean why can't we just pass in a simple boolean property? Well, if you even pass in a simple Boolean property kind of like this, it's not going to allow it because the only thing you can pass over here is something that can be bindable property, which is state. Now, state is usually used to keep track of the state of the user interface elements or the UI controls, like a toggle, a text field, a checkbox, a list view, and so on. Segmented control is another example. This dollar sign is dark syntax, or the dollar sign is basically saying that whenever the value of this toggle changes, which is usually true or false, this particular property automatically gets updated. And whenever this property gets updated, the body or the render, because that's your actual body of your app or the view, it gets fired again, which means that maybe you can change the state of other things based on the state of the its dark property. What does that mean? Well, which means that if I uh, am changing the toggle, maybe when I click on the toggle and it is on, I can use this property to change some other things. Because whenever you change the toggle, it's going to set the is dark property to true or false based on the toggle. And then whenever this particular property is set, the whole body is fired again. So let's go ahead and make sure that we can actually change the color from white to black and black to white. In order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap everything in a vertical stack. I mean, there are other ways of doing that, but I'm just gonna wrap it, everything in a vertical stack and go ahead and set the frame of the vertical stamp with a minimum width, which is zero, and maximum width, which is infinity. 
and same thing with the height minimum height which is 0 and maximum height which is infinity now if I go ahead and click on resume you should be able to see now this blue line in the preview which is basically saying that the uh, vertical stack is now taking up the whole space which is great now how would I change the color of the vertical stack based on the selection of the toggle? Now remember one thing, whenever I click on the toggle and turn it on, it is binded to this property, which is is dark, which is this property. So whenever I turn it on, this property gets updated from false to true. And not only this property gets updated, all of this gets fired again. Why all of this is fired again? Well, because this particular is dark property is a state property and whenever the state changes, it renders the body again. So based on that logic, when we are changing the is dark or we are changing or toggling between on and off, and whenever that value is going to the is dark state property, we can do something in our body which is dependent or which can utilize the is dark property. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to go over here and after setting the frame for the vertical stack, I can actually say the background. And if the is dark property is actually true, then we're going to use the black background, else we're going to use the white background. Great. Now let's go ahead, go to the live mode and try to run our application. And this time, when the application is run, running in live mode, we will click on the toggle and we will see that when we click on the toggle, that's everything, the whole vertical stack turns black. And then when you click on the toggle again, the whole vertical stack, V stack, turns back to white again. Okay, so this is loaded now. We can actually go ahead and click on the toggle. And as soon as I click, you can see the whole thing turns into black. And if I click it again, toggle it off, it comes back to white. Or on, off, on, off. So how is this working? Well, whenever we toggle it on, this part is on becomes true and the value of the on or off, the true and false, goes into the is dark, which is a state private var property. Whenever a property which is marked with state is actually set, meaning it is set to true or false, which we are doing it over here, it fires the body again. Oops. And when it fires the body again, it goes over here, and then based on the selection, if it is selected, it's on, then go ahead and turn it black, or turn it white. So that's the whole idea behind state. Now one of the other things is that what you should be putting in the state. I mean, if you are fetching data from a web service or from a database, should you also put all of that stuff into a state? Well, you can, but that's not a good idea. That's not what the state is for. It will still work, I mean, if you put it, but that's not the main idea of the state. The state is usually something that you can bind on the screen, meaning it's mostly related to the user interface elements changing, and you want to capture the state of that change, which can be related to a button over here turning on and off, or a segmented control being selected, or a different tab being selected, or a different uh, in a list control, maybe different cells are being selected. So it's always something related to the user interface and the selections or deselections or the state of different elements on the user interface. If you want to put your data and bind your data on the screen, there is something else for that and we'll cover the object binding and all that stuff later on. But that's a quick overview of the state property in Swift UI. So always remember, whenever you set the state property, which we are doing over here, it's going to fire the body again. Whenever state is set, it fires the body again and again. And that is how we are going to 
get this and going to uh, change the background color. And that's pretty much it. If you like this video and want to support my videos and my work, then the best way is to go to Udemy and check out my course. So if you want declarative interfaces for any Apple device, this is the highest rated, rated course as you can see. Uh, I'm still working on some of the sections of the course, but you can see that a lot of sections, a four and a half hour is available, and it goes into MVVM and fetching data from API and so on. Now, you don't really have to go to Udemy because all the links are already in the YouTube description. So simply click on the link, you'll get the amazing deal, and uh, I will be thankful to you. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that please use the links that are available in the description that will give you the best deal. And if, since I have added the coupons in those uh, links, I will get to keep the higher percentage of the revenue, to be really honest with you, all right? So if you use my links, uh, you will get the deal for like $10 and I get to keep like $9. So that's a good deal. And also, if you scroll down at the bottom, you will see a link to subscribe to my mailing list. I usually send out some books and articles and all that stuff. If you want to get all of that stuff, go ahead, subscribe to my mailing list and enjoy. Thank you so much for your support. And if you have any questions, let me know.